Hey there guys and welcome to How to Cope with Boredom and Loneliness, a guide for the isolated. What options have we got? Animate, of course I want animated subtitles. Okay. I'm trying to find a new game to play guys. You are Nigel Wimble, hard-hitting PBTV documentary filmmaker. Alright. You are 23 Millberry close to finish filming the final episode of your award-winning series. How to cope with boredom and loneliness, a guide for the isolated. You have come to talk with Harold Fletcher, a 43-year-old man who has been grounded to his bedroom for over 30 years. Fucking A. Since his mother Margaret only allows Harold visitation for 15 minutes a day, you only have enough time to talk about three topics. Alright. Carefully choose three items of interest from Harold's room to learn how he copes with boredom and loneliness. Let's see the telescope? Every item tells a story. Oh, we're we not gonna pick yet? But not every story is relevant to Nigel's show. Confirm your selections, then watch the documentary unfold. Okay, let's do telescope. When do I get to pick shit? Your show will be f scored on by a focus group at the end. Good luck. Okay. Alright. Let's do telescope. Ooh, examine telescope. Harold's only view to the larger world is through this telescope. It breaks your heart, hopefully. Mold from 94 is rather slender. Okay. Clock, we got a guitar, paper stack. This looks like a screenplay. Is Harold writing a movie? I like to write erotic drama set in science fiction landscapes. Okay. <laughs> Margaret TV. Truck fish tank rabbit. What's her How old's mother Margaret? How long will she punish him for? Oh, I wish you'd stop staring at me, Mr. Wimble. <laughs> Harold doesn't need a father. Wow, all right. Let's pick this. Documentary go. Tonight at 9 on PBTV, we have the final part of Nigel Wimble's hard-hitting docuseries, How to Cope with Boredom and Loneliness. A guide for the isolated. In tonight's episode, Nigel looks at a special case where a man has been grounded to his bedroom for over 33 years. Hello, I'm Nigel Wimble. Well, Harold's always been a naughty boy. He's been quite out of hand, you know. I've only got one nice picture of him, and even in that he's pissing on the cat. Fucking A. In the end, I sent him to his bedroom, and the bad behaviour seemed to stop, so I've kept him up there permanently. I had a look around Harold's room to discover what he uses to cope with the boredom and loneliness from 33 years of isolation. With an eye in the sky, you can sometimes forget where your feet are. For Harold, he never forgets where his feet are, but still has sights on the stars. This old telescope has got me through many an afternoon. Sometimes I'll pretend I'm a World War II sniper and people at the bus stop are advancing Germans. They wouldn't Whoa. stand a chance if it was a sniper rifle, let me tell you. They could oh, try buddy. taking cover, but I'm pretty sure the bullets would penetrate the bus shelter. It would be an absolute bloodbath. That's not an achievement I really wanted. Despite a screenplay Harold had been working on, a movie producer in the making, 
he suddenly wouldn't look out of place in Hollywood. He decided to read me some lines from his new screenplay card, Brad Planet and the Tentacle of Temptation. She ran a slightly damp tentacle across his cheek as he gazed longingly into her compound eyes. I don't care that you tried to bite my head off during coitus. I love you, Sheila. Run away to Planet Vargon with me. I love you too, Brad, but my father... Let me talk to him. He'll understand once I show him how much I love you. Now come here and kiss me. Oh, Brad. Sheila passionately kisses Brad with her four mouths. Brad slowly sticks his finger into her gooey. That will do, Harold. Thank you. a bloody space pervert. Harold's mother has always played prison warden. From womb to room. Margaret, do you worry about the harm this isolation may be causing, Harold? Harold bought this on himself. What about me? I've been isolated too. I haven't had sex since Harold's father died. No one would ever want to be stepfather to that little bastard. You should be making this documentary about me. I'm the one being punished. I'm so lonely, Mr. Wimble. My time with Harold has come to an end. Wow. I hope one day he will find freedom and live a full life. Until then, he will continue to look for ways to cope with boredom and loneliness. I'm Nigel Wimble. Good night. Join us next week as Nigel investigates sandwiches. Do they really taste better cut diagonally? Yes. Let the evidence decide. 9pm Wednesday night on PBTV. The evidence is they taste better. Alright, focus group report. Bad? I use my telescope the exact same way. Amazing show, Nigel. 8 out of 10. That screenplay sounded hot. When's part 2 coming out? 10 out of 10. Alan from Wallowdale. Alert, hot milfs in your area. Margaret sounds... <laughs> Margaret sounds DTF. Can you give her my number? Gary the Perv. How is it bad? It got 8 out of 10, 10 out of 10, and... Gary will just give it whatever the hell he wants to. Let's try something new. Carefully choose three ounce adventures from here. From Harold's room. We know how to do this now. Okay. Let's see, mural, rabbit. Let's just look at everything. We do the telescope. Think about mural. Examine mural. I noticed a mural on Harold's wall. Two fish swimming away from each other. Did Harold paint this as a metaphor for the relationship with his mother? That was the first and last time Harold scribbled on his wall. Okay, he does have a fish tank. An empty aquarium. Pet fish, like Harold, are prisoners to their environment. Well, I can draw a great parallel to this. Harold's father was never there, so I got him a fish. does seem to have a lot of fish related crap. I couldn't help but notice the novelty crab clock. Sometimes to combat loneliness, the isolated will attribute personality to inanimate objects. Like in that Tom Hanks movie. Oh, Harold loves that clock. We sometimes use it to time the intervals between Harold being naughty. For every five minutes he's good, I don't smack him round the head. <laughs> Fucking shit. This oversized cuddly toy looks like it's grown old with Harold. I bet a story about these two growing up could pull at the heartstrings. Wait, what are those stains? Kevin's been rather good to me over the years. Oh, let's not look at Kevin. The truck. An old toy truck, made by Harold's father perhaps. Maybe I can trigger a painful memory. Oh, Harold never plays with that, after everything his father did for him. B-poster. 
What was the KGB movie came out in the 80s? Was this the last movie Harold went out to see? Boris is actually ex-KGB. He fights for us now. It shows people can change, Mother. This is why I don't allow Harold to watch movies anymore. Rotting his mind with Soviet propaganda. What does he use TV for, then? A modern TV? I'm surprised his mother allows him to watch television. As a man. He's allowed that on no later than 8pm. Oh, what else do we have? We have Harold himself. Harold Fletcher. A curious man in a curious situation. Is this going to take long? Mother says visitation is only 15 minutes today. Even though you're the first visitor I've ever had. Uh, we did murder ourselves. Can we do the light? No. Bed? A 42 year old man still sleeping in a plastic race car bed? How pathetic. And it's just what I'm looking for. Oh, Harold loves cars and sleeping. It only made sense to combine his passions. That's right. Alright. So, what happens if I think about it? Potential soundbite. Asleep in his race car bed. I imagine Howard dreams of driving off this road of isolation. So, if we do... Bed. The empty fish tank. And... Oh, we didn't do the guitar, did we? Damn. No, not the mural, that's too obvious. So this is the B poster. Alright, Harold. Let's go, buddy. Give us a good documentary. 10 out of 10. Would be lonely again. Isolation is no joke. It's not just boring, it's lonely too. Nobody understands that more than the subject of tonight's episode of How to Cope with Boredom and Loneliness A Guide for the Isolated Hello, I'm Nigel Wimble. Harold Fletcher has been grounded to his bedroom since 1986. That's over 30 years. His mother has offered us a rare glimpse into his life as prisoner and son. On your feet, Fletcher. You have a visitor. I hope to learn how Harold has coped with the boredom and loneliness from 30 years of isolation. <laughs> Harold still sleeps in the plastic race car bed he slept in as a child. You can imagine Harold dreaming about driving away from this isolated, childlike reality. Well, I always had a passion for race cars as a child. But I suppose that passion has since left me, unlike the bed. Though I can't complain, the springs merely provide moderate pain and my feet dangle no more than 7 to 10 inches from the end of the mattress. Like Mother always says, as long as your head is above water, you can technically sleep anywhere. That's a good point. Well, look on the bright side there, Harold. You can lose hours to the peace and tranquility of a well-maintained aquarium. But like the fish, Harold is swimming in a sea of isolation. I sometimes look at the fish tank as if it is my bedroom and I am mother. But then I felt it wasn't fair wow. to keep the fish isolated like me, so I set it free. What did you do with the fish? Well, I took it to school to release into the nearby brook. But by the time I had got there, it had dried out in my pocket. How did you go to school? I noticed a poster for an old children's movie. For some, movies are an escape from reality. But Harold, his reality is like a movie. A Final plot TV holes. movie starring actors you haven't seen in 20 years. I do love getting lost in a good movie. I think Boris the KGB movie was the last time I did get lost in a movie. It was the last time Mother rewarded me for good behaviour. 
I remember it like yesterday. Ooh, Boris KGB movie was a 1986 children's movie. It was banned one week after release. Ooh, get to watch the movie. I'm a be a mean, I'm an intellectual, I'm Russian, you see, I'm the homosexual. <laughs> Fuck it out. I'm going your drinks been laced, I'm gonna tie you up, pollinate your face, I want to torture you, make you scream. After all, I'm honest, the KGB, you better be there, pull the heart, break your knees, I'm a mad the puzzle, I'm KGB, you want to buzz your bees, you can't buzz with me. To the K, to the G, to the mother person B, you say you want to be it, but you're gonna die, you better say goodbye, here comes some cyanide. Boris, please, you don't have to do this. It was just business. It was all about the honey. I'm not a traitor. I love this country. You've got to release me. You have to see. I'm country first and I'm still KGB. You are no longer KGB. You're just a super worker bee. Prison number 33. Have another broken knee. Would you like a cup of tea? That was just a joke. You see, you'll never see a cup of tea. As long as you're like a paper, coffee is available. If you like a cup of tea, would you like a sugar cube? When I finish speaking, you would be here, brother, because I aim to please. I got a knife and a hammer and some antifreeze. Is it hard? To speak through your missing teeth Will you try to fly What's it take your eye If you want to leave Then take my key But I'll break your knees I'm Boris the KGB Oh behave brother Get it Boris damn Holy shit I remember Boris used to say Oh behave brother Get it Behave It was awfully funny when mother used to tell me to behave And I'd retort Oh behave mother do you remember that, Mother? Yes, I do remember, you cheeky little shit. Then Mother would put you over her knee, but you didn't tell the man that, did you? Have you seen the version on YouTube where the movie speeds up every time Boris kills a dissident? It becomes quite dizzying. My time with Harold has come to an end. I hope one day he will find freedom and live a full life. Until then... He will continue to look for ways to cope with boredom and loneliness. I'm Nigel Wimble. Good night. Join us next week as Nigel investigates Jesus. Did he really have a beard? 9pm Wednesday night on PBTV. Asking the important questions. Alright, so why was it bad again? I laughed so hard I shit milk. See, that's good. He murdered a fish that you put this man on television? 3 out of 10. An angry vegan. I wish that mother would be behave. <laughs> okay. So. Get it, Nigel. Alright. We didn't do the guitar, and he's playing the guitar on the damn title screen, so... I think we missed something. Yes, we know how to play the game. Let me in... Let me click stuff. Alright, so examine the guitar. How long has Harold been playing guitar? What if I've discovered a virtuoso that looks well used? Mother says I sing like a dog. Howling in agony. <laughs> Take some lessons from the KGB guy. Alright, so we're gonna select the guitar. I'm thinking the truck. The bed he didn't give us two shits about. The telescope got us a good score, I think. So do the truck. I'm nervous to do the damn rabbit, I'll be honest. What else have we not done? We're on the TV or the clock. But the movie didn't seem like that big of a deal to him, though. Let's do the clock. Alright. Come on, Harold. We need 10 out of 10 across the board. His name's Harold Fletcher, and he spent the last 30 years grounded to his bedroom. In tonight's final part of How to Cope with Boredom and Loneliness, A Guide for the Isolated, we've saved the worst for last. And by worst, I mean award-winning. Hello, I'm Nigel Wimble. Let's win an award, baby. I can't even remember why I grounded him now. 
It wasn't for any one thing in particular. More just a bubbling pot of bad behaviour that needed to put a lid on, so to speak. You can replace the word lid with Harold's bedroom door to understand Harold's mother's analogy. I was desperate to discover Thanks how Harold had been coping with the boredom and loneliness from 30 years of isolation. Music can take you to places only your ears can see. The guitar is Harold's vessel to unseen worlds. And he is the captain. If my father allows it, I will play you a new piece I've been working on, entitled Plastic Race Car Bed. Go for it. Amazing graphics, guys. Here we are, sitting in my car, my little plastic car, yes, here we are. Oh my car, my little plastic car, take me to the road and I sing this song. Old hot tar, not in my car, these tires are made for asphalt roads. Yes! The poorly carved toy truck serves as a reminder of an absent father. But sometimes, life on the road means, Mummy, when's Daddy coming home? Harold's father has been absent for most of his life, mostly owing to the fact that he's dead. It's pretty he good was reason. involved in a massive collision, resulting in 52 deaths. Fuck. Father made me this truck himself. He said he used to work on it while he was on long journeys. The police officer said he was whittling the last piece when his truck collided with the school bus. There you go. I gonna say it's probably a bad fucking idea For to do Harold, that. The watchful clock is ever ticking. In a way, time has been his only companion. I've always hated Crab Clock. He's always been there mocking me with his incessant ticking and talking. Did you know he's ticked roughly one billion sixty million six hundred and eighty thousand and one, two, three times since my incarceration? I didn't bother counting the tox. Tox aren't as important. My time with Harold has come to an end. I hope one day he will find freedom and live a full life. Until then, he will continue to look for ways to cope with boredom and loneliness. I'm Nigel Wimble. Good night. night Join Nigel. us next week as Nigel investigates cows and why so many stomachs. 9pm Wednesday night on PPTV. Folks, we're regular. Very poignant moment when he pulled out the guitar. Great, yet another depressing show on TV. I love him. The filmmaker asked the prisoner about a clock while I'm looking at my watch. Alright, so we got a, a pretty good score from the guitar. And a pretty good score from the telescope, I believe. I wonder if it changes. I think we have one more. Yes, I know how to do it now. I just... Uh, we have the rabbit, the TV. Is there anything else that we've missed? We've done the telescope, we've done the mural, we've done the clock. We've done the KGB poster. We can't click on him. Alright, so let's do this. And the TV. Is there anything else we've missed? Into the light. Okay, and we'll do the telescope again to see if that's still 10 out of 10. That still gives us a good score. Come on, Nigel. Good scores. Are you sure this is the saddest music you could find? Hello, I'm Nigel Wimble, award-winning winner. Tonight on PBTV, I'm here to meet a man named Harold Fletcher as part of my How to Cope with Boredom and Loneliness series. Harold has been grounded to his room 
for the past 30 years in an isolation case the likes we've never seen before. His mother Margaret, the warden to Harold's prison, has granted Harold a 15-minute visitation break to speak with us. You won't mind a quick strip search for contraband, will ya? We hope he can explain to us how he copes with the boredom and loneliness from 30 years of isolation. Harold and his cohabitor, oh God. an overstuffed rabbit, have been through hell together, but at least had each other to ease the loneliness. Keep it PG. Yes, Kevin is a dear friend. We've become rather close over these past few years and perhaps more than just friends at this stage. What do you mean by that? Don't well, ask Kevin him. Kevin has needs and I have needs. I'm forever sewing that towel back on. Fuck. We saw this kind of thing go on in our prison episode, so I'm not entirely surprised to see it happen in here too. Whether this arrangement is mutual, we will never know. As Kevin has decided to remain quiet during the making of this documentary. With an isolated Jesus. idiot, watching television is an escapism we all take for granted. Well, Mother treated me to a modern television last year. She says if I'm good this year, she will allow me to keep the plug for an extra ten minutes. But you haven't been good, have you, Harold? Tell the man about the carrot you stuck up your nose. I told you not to smuggle food in here. Well, Kevin likes a snack when we watch I'm the first so 23 minutes those. of a movie. With an eye in the sky, you can sometimes forget where your feet okay, are. Okay, so it is the same. For Harold, he never forgets where his feet are, but still has sights on the stars. This old telescope has got me through many an afternoon. Sometimes I'll pretend I'm a World War II sniper and people at the bus stop are advancing Germans. They wouldn't stand a chance if it was a sniper rifle, let me tell you. They could try taking cover, but I'm pretty sure the bullets would penetrate the bus shelter. Jesus. It would be an absolute bloodbath. My time with Harold has come to an end. You should be lucky. I hope one day he will find freedom and live a full life. Until then, he will continue to look for ways to cope with boredom and loneliness. I'm Nigel Wimble. Good night. Join us next week as Nigel investigates sandwiches. Do they really taste better cut diagonally? We already know this. Well, let the evidence decide. 9 p.m. Wednesday night on PBTV. Alright, what score do we get? Regular. Wow, hard to think stuff. I didn't know anyone know where I can order a rabbit like that. He should be happy his TV is switched off. He doesn't have to watch this dribble. And the telescope got an 8 out of 10. Okay, so the rabbit got us a 10. The guitar got us a 10. Let's see. So rabbit, guitar... Rabbit, guitar. The KGB didn't do that well, did it? I'm trying to think what else was. This wasn't that good. The first one I did this. Her. And. Paper stack. Was it the paper stack? Let's see. Are you sure this is the saddest music you could find? Hello. I'm Nigel Wimble, 
award-winning winner. Tonight on PBTV, I'm here to meet a man named Harold Fletcher as part of my How to Cope with Boredom and Loneliness series. Harold has been grounded to his room You're for the to repeat past yourself, 30 Nigel. years in an isolation case the likes we've never seen before. His mother Margaret, the warden to Harold's prison, has granted Harold a 15-minute visitation break to speak with us. You won't mind a quick strip search for contraband, will ya? We hope he can explain to us how he copes with the boredom and loneliness from 30 years of isolation. Harold and his cohabitor, an overstuffed rabbit, have been through hell together, but at least had each other to ease the loneliness. Yes, Kevin is a dear friend. We've become rather close over these past few years and perhaps more than just friends at this stage. What do you mean by that? Well, Kevin has needs and I have needs. I'm forever sewing that towel back on. We saw this kind of thing go on in our prison episode, so I'm not entirely surprised to see it happen in here too. Whether this arrangement is mutual, we will never know. As Kevin has decided to remain quiet during the making of this documentary. Music can take you to places only your ears can see. The guitar is Harold's vessel to unseen worlds. And he is the captain. If Mother allows it, I will play you a new piece I've been working on, entitled Plastic Race Car Bed. Here we are, sitting in my car, my little plastic car, yes, here we are. Oh my car, my little plastic car, take me to the road and I sing this song. Old hot tar, not in my car, these tires are made for asphalt roads. I spied a screenplay Harold had been working on. A movie producer in the making? He certainly wouldn't look out of place in Hollywood. He decided to read me some lines from his new screenplay card, Brad Planet and the Tentacle of Temptation. She ran a slightly damp tentacle across his cheek as he gazed longingly into her compound eyes. I don't care that you tried to bite my head off during coitus. I love you, Sheila. Run away to Planet Vargon with me. I love you too, Brad, but my father... Let me talk to him. He'll understand once I show him how much I love you. Now come here and kiss me. Oh, Brad. Sheila passionately kisses Brad with her four mouths. Brad slowly sticks his finger into her gooey. That will do, Harold. You're a bloody space pervert. My time with Harold has come to an end. I hope one day he will find freedom and live a full life. Until then, he will continue to look for ways to cope with boredom and loneliness. I'm Nigel Wimble. Good night. Join us next week as Nigel investigates video games. Is it more than just bang bang your mum's a fag? 9pm, Wednesday night, PPTV. Alright. Ooh, one month later, the following footage was uploaded to us from one of our missing cameras. Uh oh. This is one I wrote for you, Kevin. When we're in my room alone, I start to take off all my clothes. I wish I had a camera phone, cause that's a nice erotic pose. Or we could make a calendar and you could be December. Oh, carrots help you see in the dark. We don't need lights when we fuck. I just need somewhere to park. Actually, I think it's too dark. I can't see anything. Can we put the lights on low? Oh, Kevin. You're a friend of mine Through thick and thin Together to the end of time 
Oh, Kevin, you're a friend of mine, but I never really took the time to find out what was on your mind. Just what you have in your insides. Oh, Kevin, I'm so sorry, I don't want to see you cry. Oh, Kevin, when we're making love, who are you really thinking of? I know you like him strong and so wait, no, not Mr. Wimble. I'm not sure he's into you or even available. Kevin. Run, Kevin. You're a friend of mine. Just run away. To thick and thin, together to the end of time. fucking game I've ever played. Harold, I'm about to barge in so make sure you're decent. Come in, Mother. You better not be touching Kevin up again. I'm merely serenading him, Mother. What are you doing with that camera? Where did you get it? I found it, Mother. Mr. Wimble must have dropped it. I thought I'd use it to record a song for Kevin. You can play it back if you want to listen. No, I don't want to bloody listen to it. You stole that camera, didn't you, you thieving little puss? What else have you been recording? Mummy's secrets? It will come back here looking for it, you know. Hmm, it will come back here looking for it. Mummy's going to get changed. Give me that camera. Oh, God. I'll make sure Mr. Wimble gets what he's looking for. You stay up here in your bedroom. Okay, mother. Don't hurt him like the other men. Ooh. Okay, no, no more reshoot. That's quite enough, I think. That was... I, I don't even know what to fucking say. That was goddamn strange. But, if for some fucking reason you enjoyed it, Click the buttons down below, and I'll see y'all next time.